A patient taking the multiple sclerosis drug Acrevis has been reported to have PML, the feared brain infection caused by the JC virus. In this video, I will give you an important safety update explaining PML and describing the case. I'm Brandon Bieber, and I post multiple sclerosis informational videos every Wednesday, so if you're interested, please click subscribe and ring that bell. Now, to give a little bit of a background on PML, PML stands for Progressive Multifocal Leukoencephalopathy, and it's a very rare infection of the brain caused by the JC virus, the John Cunningham virus. Now, the JC virus is everywhere. A lot of people are infected with it and will test positive for positive antibodies against the virus on serology. So the virus is in their body, but the immune system essentially shuts it down so it doesn't cause any symptoms and it's not a big deal. But when people are taking certain type of immunosuppressive drugs or have certain medical conditions that weaken the immune system, the virus can become activated and infect the brain and cause this infection that sort of spreads in different areas of the brain and progresses slowly. So progressive, P, multifocal, because there are different areas of the brain, and leukoencephalopathy, in other words, it primarily affects the white matter, hence PML, progressive multifocal leukoencephalopathy. Now, when we test people for antibodies against the JC virus, many people test positive. And generally speaking, this is a concern for the multiple sclerosis drug Tysabri, because there have been hundreds of patients taking Tysabri for multiple sclerosis who have gotten PML, many of whom have died. The mortality with Tysabri and PML has been estimated to be about 23%, and many of the survivors have serious disabilities, even if they survive. However, PML has also been reported with other multiple sclerosis drugs, for instance, with Gelenia, which is fingolamide, and dimethylfumarate, which is Tecfidera. There are rare cases of PML. Today, I will discuss a first case reported with the drug Ocrevus. Now, there have been other cases reported with Ocrevus, actually seven prior cases, but all of them were so-called carryover cases. In other words, the patient who received Ocrevus had also previously uh, received a medication that was known to increase the risk of PML. This is the first case of a de novo case of PML. PML. In other words, the patient did not receive any medication known to increase the risk of PML. Now, one interesting thing is that there's a very similar medication to Ocrevus called Rituxan, Rituximab, which has been used for multiple sclerosis for many years, even though it's not FDA approved for MS. And it's known that this drug in very rare cases can cause PML. And there was actually a very good series published about PML in people taking Rituxan for rheumatoid arthritis. And they reported a risk of about one in 30,000. And, but many of those patients were taking other immunosuppressive drugs at the same time. And in people with MS, to my knowledge, there have been no cases of PML reported in people t with multiple sclerosis just taking Rituxan. But we've always sort of known that there was a risk with this drug, and we've sort of known that there could be a risk with Ocrevus, even though it may be very, very low. One more thing I should mention is that there have been rare cases of PML in an elderly person without any specific medical condition and not taking any specific immunosuppressant. And the reason for this is because of what we know as immunosenescence. In other words, the immune system tends to decrease a little bit just with normal aging. And this patient was in fact quite old. Uh, this patient was 78 years old, which is relatively old for a person with MS to be taking this sort of medication. Um, I should also mention that I personally have seen a single case of PML in my career, though it wasn't someone with MS, it was actually an AIDS patient who had a lesion in the brainstem caused by PML. Now, the case of PML in Ocrevus that I'll describe was a 78-year-old, and we don't know too much except that the person had, quote, long-standing multiple sclerosis, and for some reason had never been treated with prior disease-modifying therapy. We don't know if there was a particular reason for their physician to use this drug, the person had highly active disease, or just suddenly decided they wanted to go on medication. We don't know how disabled the person was or what other medical comorbidities the person had before taking Ocrevus. 
But we do know that the person had low absolute lymphocyte counts, in other words, reduced white blood cell counts, even before taking Ocrevus. And there was actually a low CD4 positive and CD8 positive count before taking Ocrevus and during treatment. Now, CD4 and CD8 are markers of T cells. So even though Ocrevus works on the B cells, the other part of the immune system, the other type of lymphocyte, was already depleted in this patient. So maybe a combination of increased age and low CD4, CD8 counts may have contributed to the increased risk of PML. We don't know any of the details about where the lesions were or how the patient's doing or anything like that. And in fact, Roche, which is the drug company that makes Ocrevus, has not released a press release yet. The way I found out this information is from Dr. Gavin Giovannoni's blog, and I'll post a link below, as well as an update on the PML cases from Roche. I will post the link of that below. So I hope that you found this information useful. If you have any questions, please post in the comments below.